So, the sequel to the movie that I find to be the scariest ever. Let's see how much sleep I get after this one. Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to another Super Series Tuesday. For today we will be covering the third film in the Conjuring universe titled The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring 2 was released in 2015 and stars Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, and Madison Wolf. and was directed once again by the great James Wan. Horror master. Honestly, truthfully, stick by that statement. The guy gave us The Conjuring, gave us Insidious, gave us Saw. The dude's got a crazy mind. Once again, we are following Ed and Lorraine Warren. This time they are being sent to London in order to help a single mother and her four children because they are being haunted. What else? They're paranormal investigators is what they do. We prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine Warren. So to start the positives on this one, guys, first and foremost, the same as the last one, the leads. Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson as Ed and Lorraine Warren. They do a great job, guys. You literally do once again believe in everything they say. They seem like real, nice, genuine people. And to the best of my knowledge, they portray these real life people extremely well like down to a beat they know every single thing about these people they've studied them for these roles they've actually gotten to meet the real Lorraine Warren you know they do a very just almost perfect job embodying these people they do a great job so once again guys props to them they do fantastic and again the atmosphere is nailed in this movie guys just like the tension the you know the close camera angles and the the music heightening and just the, the silence cutting in just like the little things going on in the background the things just to unnerve you over and over again they do an absolutely stand-up job once again the atmosphere that's probably like the best thing that this movie and its predecessor has going for it it's just the fact that the atmosphere is always around you you just really you feel captivated by everything that's going on on screen they do a spectacular job at that as well and next is I just want to say this and it's gonna sound weird for now until I actually get to the negatives later on this movie is still very scary let me reiterate that because when we get to the negatives you're gonna think that I don't like this movie no this movie is still supremely scary like it's a very scary movie I watched it with a group of friends I've seen it before anyway but when I watch it with this group of friends two out of the five of us hadn't seen it before and it was scary they were jumping quite a bit and even me I, I was jumping quite a bit and I was still really just on the edge of my seat even though I have seen it before so that's just a testament to how scary this movie really is and next is something that I noticed more so in this one than the last one is just the stuff going on in the background now whether that's like just the simple background noises just the kind of pitter patter the footsteps dripping water sometimes they have like very low almost sounds like like a trumpet or some kind of instrument just playing in the background just a little little it's not like a score it's just almost like sounds they're making in the background that stuff is really well done as well as the things you see in the background now you got that in the first movie as well but I noticed it more prominently in this one where people are just walking by a room and you just see a figure kind of off in the corner you see things in the background like a, so many blink and you'll miss it moments that are very well done in this one as well some movies can do this very cheaply as well and I don't like that the thing that actually makes it scary and just really just kind of unnerves you and makes you squirm is when you walk past a room and it is a blink and you'll miss that moment. They're just kind of off in the corner, they're kind of sitting there, yada yada, that stuff's fine. The thing that annoys me is in some movies when they try to, again, they're super jump scare heavy, is when you walk past a room and instead of it being like in a corner and maybe you notice it, maybe you don't, it's like standing right in the doorway and only the character doesn't notice it and it's just a big dun. It's like stupid don't do that let us just be scared let us naturally be scared don't give us a, a visual or an audible cue like hey be scared now that stuff annoys me luckily this movie doesn't do that it really relies on you just inspecting every single aspect of every single scene and in doing so you will find a lot more creepy things when you go back and watch this movie trust me you will notice a lot more stuff in the background when you're really paying attention to it that stuff was superb and next sadly we're down to like kind of the end of the positives really because that's all this movie kind of has going for it it's great leads and it's very scary and there's lots of cool background stuff the next part is the cross scene in particular the one you see in the commercial with the little girls in the room you just see all the crosses turning upside down that and everything that was kind of leading up to it is all very scary it's super super intense i will i will say that for sure and they did a fantastic job on that scene honestly it's top notch it's very just amazing quality horror right there and next is when it gets to the end again the ends like the end credits isn't even a scene just kind of you know when it shows pictures of the real family and stuff but the one that was the most unnerving that was in this movie that wasn't the last movie is that they actually have a real life recording from events that took place in the house in holy hell guys if you just want to feel supremely uncomfortable watching a movie in your house and not because it's like you know just insanely gory like saw or anything like that like this literally made me squirm it made me feel so uncomfortable it raised just the hair on my arms it gave me major goosebumps 
it will definitely shake you when you hear this recording. If you truly believe that it's real, which I kind of do, I gotta be honest, it's really creepy. And no middle ground for this one, guys, so we can just head right to the negatives. The negatives, they do kind of stack up, but trust me, like I said, this movie is still very scary. The first one is that the pacing in this movie I found to be pretty well off. Like I said in the first one, pacing was something that I praised in that movie. It starts off kind of slow, picks up, picks up more and more, and then it's like damn well horrifying in the end of it. This movie starts off just trying to be scary right over the gate. It's like the first night in the first movie. It's not just like the little happenings like in the beginning of the first movie. It's just right away you're getting jump scares. You're getting chased by characters. Doors are slamming. Furniture's flying everywhere. They're screaming and they're, you know, possessed children. It's like right away in this movie. And then it continues throughout the movie, which leads into my next point to the fact that this movie felt supremely repetitive. And because of those two things, you feel this movie's two hour and 14 minute runtime. Yes, two hour and 14. This movie almost clocks into two and a half hours and with it being just kind of so repetitive at times it kind of like it's still scary still very scary but you do definitely feel the runtime and it does feel repetitive because it's like every night's the same thing slight noise jump scare gets chased by something turns out to not be something jump scare family notices blah blah so you do definitely feel like it feels like it's a pacing issue for sure because it didn't get gradually scarier next in this movie and some people might disagree with me especially because you know there's now so many spin-offs coming off out of this movie actually but just the fact that the villains in this movie or the spirits they come off as super whimsical to me. You have the nun in this one, the crooked man, and the old man Bill Wilkins. Bill Wilkins is okay, he does kind of look a little scaly and old and he's got like glowing eyes, but the nun to me feels super cartoonish, still creepy and stuff for sure, and the crooked man especially feels super cartoonish and super whimsical. He looks like a weird deformed cross between the Slender Man and Jack Skellington. And before I even get any further, the Crooked Man looks horrible in this movie. The CGI is really bad. It looks like stop motion animation, but like the bad kind. Does not work for me. The Crooked Man didn't work at all. I didn't find him scary. I found him annoying. He didn't look real, so that I thought that was stupid. But just the yeah, other nun felt super whimsical. And I just I didn't believe it as much. It felt too cartoonish. Because of that, to me, it felt more like an insidious movie. I do love the insidious movies, actually, but the difference is. I went to watch The Conjuring 2 because of how real The Conjuring 1 felt. If I want to go watch whimsical, weird spirits and characters, I will go watch Insidious. But this feels like it was kind of a cross between the two, and I didn't like it as much. And here's a big negative, which sucks because I was able to at least shift it to the middle ground for the last one, but with this one, it goes like full-blown Annabelle, and the fact that there are a ton of jump scares in this movie. Sadly, this movie is extremely jump scare heavy. That really annoyed me because, like I said, it just felt like since they got scary right away and stayed with that same pace the whole movie and it got repetitive, they had to rely so much more heavily on jump scares than they did in the last one, because the last one, it was just kind of creepy and disturbing and unnerving and it got progressively worse well better i guess technically as a horror movie but this one no it just it, it has to keep you interested entertained and scared because of jump scares so this movie goes super super jump scare heavy and next to the fact that i just don't care for the family at all in this one the last one i did because why you got to follow them like right from the beginning you were primarily following this family and you got to know them as the nights went on before it went like full-blown batshit crazy you got to know the family in the first one this one you don't where it starts off scary you're just kind of finding out little bits and pieces of information about this family as it goes to the point that you get the main girl janet played by madison wolf and the mother who get a lot of screen time then her sister a little bit but that's only because they share a room and then one of the brothers because he has a stutter and the other brother gets one line and you completely forget he's in the movie because he's literally just there as a face and half the time the two boys look so much alike you can't even tell them apart and something that really bothered me about this movie and it goes back to almost being similar to the villains is that this movie felt more like a movie and that's a major detractor for me because with the first one, it felt real. Like I told you guys, I was scared just being in my room. I like couldn't sleep. I was horrified. It felt so real. And especially that goes to like because of the victims. Like the, the spirits in that one were just like suicide victims or murder victims. And they were so much scarier than these whimsical kind of creatures. This one feels more cinematic, especially towards the last act. It feels super cinematic. It feels like a movie. The last one didn't. The last one to me felt real. That's a knock for me because I came to The Conjuring well, it came from The Conjuring, going to The Conjuring 2, expecting to get more of The Conjuring, more of that real horror feeling. This one, I didn't. So for all those reasons, guys, I'm going to be giving The Conjuring 2 a 7 out of 10. So guys, that's my review on The Conjuring 2. As always, if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know. Did you think The Conjuring 2 beat The Conjuring? Was it just as scary, more scary, or do you agree with me and think that it was less scary? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap.